Hello there and welcome to another episode of 3D Christianity. My name is John Hathaway and I'm your host. And you may have noticed that this is not my normal background uh, for recording. Um, I'm in my old recording studio, which is now our guest bedroom. Uh, so <clears throat> things are moved around a little bit different. Um, I'm working from home today, so uh, I just thought I would go ahead and record a quick episode on my lunch break. Uh, and we're going to be looking at Matthew 7, verses 21 through 23 this morning. Um, and this is not a very scripted episode either. Um, so we're just going to be kind of talking about it, talking about what we see there. Also, um, if you hear noise in the background, that's probably my daughter. Uh, she is eight months old and... My wife and my daughter are out there as I'm recording. Also, I have some cats at home, so you may hear an occasional meow coming from the cat. So, uh, just please forgive the background noise, but we're going to go ahead and get started in just a moment. I do just want to uh, say thank you for watching, and if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. Um, if, you, if you're already a subscriber, I would appreciate it if you would hit the thumbs up on this video. Um, to help the YouTube algorithm and help grow this channel and everything. Eventually, I do want to make this channel grow a little bit more and be able to reach a lot more people. Um, we're trying to help people to grow and transform in their faith here at 3D Christianity. Um, and to be able to do that more effectively, um, it would help to have more people liking the videos, commenting your thoughts, and... Uh, of course, subscribing if you haven't already. So, uh, also hitting that bell notification to make sure that you don't miss any videos in the future. That really helps as well. Uh, so, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into um, the subject of this episode. We're going to be talking about Matthew 7 21 through 23. That is the passage where uh, Jesus tells certain people. He talks about in the end that he's going to tell certain people, I never knew you. Now, let's talk about that. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and read those verses. Starting in verse 21 of Matthew 7, it says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So um, this is a passage that is often um, misinterpreted. And also it's um, it can be a pretty fearful passage if you, uh, <clears throat> you know, if, I mean, for some people, like if you're not sure about your salvation, if you don't have assurance of salvation, or you just, um, you know, you you tend to doubt, or maybe you don't have 100% certainty about whether you're saved or not, if that's something that you've questioned from time to time, or you, you currently are questioning it, then this can be a scary passage. Um, now, I want to first get some stuff out of the way about what this verse is not implying. So uh, there is a false teaching out there that uh, basically says that God gives faith to some people, that he gives them uh, true faith, um, or I mean, I don't know the exact terms for it, or there's also types of grace that you could say people um, apply this to. And um, there is a term called evanescent grace that's not anywhere in the Bible, but it was made up uh, by some theologians, uh, you know, in the past few centuries, maybe. Um, and what evanescent grace means is basically that God causes some people to believe for a short time, but that their faith wasn't um, truly authentic or genuine. And so they eventually fall and they, um, they apostatize or 
maybe they don't even apostatize, but maybe they just think that their faith was real up until the end. And then um, at the end, Jesus tells them, well, I never knew you. You were not really mine. You were not really um, born again or anything like that. So it's not, this is not some kind of thing where they were duped where they believed on Jesus Christ for salvation and then they were duped and Jesus told them, nope, sorry, uh, that was fake. <laughs> so uh, that that's a false teaching. Now, there's another false teaching that is often applied to this message as, or to this passage as well, where people will say that this is about Christians who didn't have enough good works. And I don't, honestly, I don't know... <laughs> I mean, I think I used to believe in that a little bit because um, I come from a somewhat, um, I guess I grew up in a little bit more of an Arminian background where you believe, where uh, it was taught that you could lose your salvation and things like that and you had to maintain a certain level of good works um, in order to stay saved or if you, or that you could lose salvation and then you had to do a bunch of stuff to get back into good standing with God. So a bunch of... Uh, unbiblical stuff like that now um so i it's kind of confusing like why why would people believe that this is teaching work salvation uh because it clearly says here i mean it gives an example of people that are listing their works as a means of saying that they should be able to have eternal life that they should be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven and, well, what does he say? Let's just read it again. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. So a lot of people that either teach lordship salvation or that teach work salvation will, will use this and basically saying, okay, well, this is just, this is saying that it's, it's more than just calling upon the name of the Lord. You have to do more than that. And, and that's not at all what this verse is saying what this passage is saying. But let's continue on reading. Um, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Now, that's a good question. What is the will of uh, the Father? We're going to look at that in a minute. <clears throat> but let's continue reading. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? So this is specifying about what what is going on when people say, Lord, Lord. It's not just talking about calling upon the name of the Lord for salvation. But many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then, uh, then will I profess unto them, I never knew you depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So what um what is it that that is basically the ultimate <clears throat> catalyst the reason that these people um were were not able to enter into the kingdom well according to the last verse it's because jesus said i never knew you so basically there was no relationship there there was no authentic relationship between uh the savior and the sinner um these people were professing Christians. Uh, we know that they weren't just believers in some other religion. It, it says, because they say in your name, they say, have we not professed in thy name? Or no, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name have done many wonderful works. So these are professing Christians here in this verse. This is not, <clears throat> these aren't Buddhists or, um, you know, they're not Muslims or Jews or things like that. These are professing Christians and who are claiming all these good works that they've done. They, and these are seemingly religious people as well. So it's not like they were just um, inherently wicked people. These people seem to be, um, you know, doing a lot of good works, casting out devils and prophesying in Jesus name and doing many wonderful works. But something was missing there. And what was that? That it was that relationship. They were missing. Um, they didn't believe 
upon Jesus Christ to get them to heaven. And, um, now, I, I think I can, um, I think I can demonstrate this by going to John chapter six. But first, let's look at that phrase again, where it says, uh, "So not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven." So now let's look. Let's see what is the will of the Father. So we're going to go to John chapter 6. <clears throat> okay, I didn't have my stuff bookmarked, so... Okay, John chapter 6, and here we go. So there's two verses here I'm going to read. Uh, this is Jesus talking again. John 6, verse 39 and 40, it says, And this is the will, and this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again in the last day. And then verse 40 says, And this is the will of him, of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So what is the will of the Father? It is to believe on the Son. It is to believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior. Um, trusting in him alone for salvation, not trusting in your works. We see what happens when you trust in um, a lot. And a lot of people do this. They, they will claim the name of Jesus. Maybe they said a prayer um, at one point in their life. Maybe they didn't. Um, but um, they never, it seems like they, they were never authentically believing in Jesus Christ as their Lord or as their Savior um, they were still trusting in their works uh, to some capacity to get them into heaven and um, we a, a few months ago I recorded an episode about the rich young ruler that approached Jesus and was asking him what good thing must I do uh, to, to have eternal life and this is kind of a similar thing so these people were basically doing all these good works in hopes that they would have eternal life at the end but what Jesus is saying here is that it's not about the works that you do even the Pharisees I mean Jesus said unless your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees basically you're gonna perish I'm paraphrasing of course but um, but you can look that up for yourself so and what that basically is saying is that it's impossible to have the righteousness that, that exceeds that of the Pharisees, to uh, have the righteousness that comes from the law. The law is a schoolmaster, basically, that shows us, um, it makes sin known unto us, it makes it, us know right from wrong, and um, how to follow God appropriately. But with the sin that we have with our fallen um, our fallen nature uh, the world being in the shape that it's in because of the sin that entered the world um, whenever Adam and Eve sinned and the corruption that came upon the world basically um, there's no one that can live a completely righteous and moral life according to God's standards and these people thought that they could get there on their own the people that Jesus is talking about in Matthew 7 um, <clears throat> but according to I mean what what did he say that they won't um, not everyone that says Lord Lord will enter into the kingdom of heaven or will enter into heaven but those that do the will of my father which is in heaven and what is the will of the father well it says right here in John chapter 6 verse 39 and 40 in verse 40 specifically it says and this is the will of him that sent me that every one which seeth the son and believeth on him he may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day so um <clears throat> again sorry for that background noise uh, just my daughter <laughs> um, but yeah I think we're gonna I don't think I really need to go much further on that to explain but uh, 
this this passage is basically it, it's basically refuting work salvation and it's not it's not saying anything about you know basically uh, be not believing hard enough or anything like it's not this passage is not about you know, the strength of your belief or anything like that or if you um, you know if you had enough effort in your belief or anything like that it's not talking about necessarily that but it's talking about first of all you need to have that relationship with Christ and works are, are a good thing but that's not what gets us to heaven you can't be depending on your works to get you to heaven I know I haven't really articulated this very well um, I didn't go with the script or anything today but uh, I hope this video has been helpful and um, look forward to recording some more episodes soon again make sure to like and comment and subscribe and we will see you next time on 3d christianity have a great day